Since the early 1980s, industrial productivity has soared, while compensation for working-level staff has stagnated. Because corporations have been showering money on upper-level management and silencing middle-level managers with non-disclosure agreements, resulting in increases in poverty and all of the associated morbidities related to poverty. Business Magicians The Dominoes Fall While corporations continue to fight unions, cut worker salaries and benefits, move jobs overseas, and disparage their working-level staff as lazy and entitled, a cascade of high-profile management failures has been piling up underneath their arguments. Gross mismanagement cost 98 people their lives in the collapse of the Surfside condo in Miami. Greedy management cost 346 people their lives in the crashes of two 737 MAX jets. Everyone knew that a Katrina-like storm would kill thousands, but management inaction led to 1,500 deaths. Government regulators did little to stop oxycodone from killing half a million people from overdoses and then failed to punish those responsible with criminal sanctions. But we continue to shower money on government and corporate management types. But somehow, we can never find enough money to properly compensate rank-and-file teachers or the workers that keep our warehouses stocked or aid in their delivery so that the average family struggles to scrape together $400 in case of an emergency. While our political class continues to make empty promises and focus on cultural value issues, if they're not blaming immigrants rather than those managers who ship good manufacturing jobs overseas, in short, we have a severe ethics crisis among managers in this country and no one is trying to hold them accountable. Because we have all fallen under the spell of celebrity culture and empty slogans that continue to keep us in bondage. They say trickle down raises all boats, but then they hand out all of the benefits to wealthy CEOs and the millionaire and billionaire investor classes. They say retirement is a thing of the past, while they hand out tens of millions in golden parachutes to retiring executives while eliminating pensions and attacking Social Security benefits. They say immigrants are out to get your job, while they continue to ship factories overseas so that those same immigrants can work your job in their native lands. They say white-collar crime is victimless, even though such crimes often kill and bankrupt more people than street crime and shifts the tax burden to the middle class. They say, just work harder to get ahead. But quiet quitting started when people realized that old adage just resulted in broken backs, empty wallets, and skyrocketing health insurance bills. They say, STEM is the future, while cutting technical staff by as much as 50% and continuing to move STEM jobs overseas. They say, start your own business, while the vast majority of new businesses fail within five years, in part because the big monopolies strangle infant businesses in the crib. They say, it's a level playing field when everyone knows it is anything but. They tell young women to get your own bag, meaning plan to live independently. Never mind that most two-income families struggle to buy a home in today's housing market. They say it's a gig economy, without telling you that most of these gig jobs are financially engineered to transfer maximum profit to the owners and to leave the workers out in the cold. But we know the truth, don't we? The game is rigged, and it's been rigged for some time. Corruption is rampant in corporate America. All the rewards go to the top. Profits are booked in tax shelters overseas. The tax burden falls on the middle class. The politicians are all owned by the wealthy donor class. Supreme Court justices openly accept bribes from wealthy benefactors. And the people that do the least work make the most money, while the church stands silently by after years of compromise and scandals has rendered its role as the conscience of society useless. Pushing a consumer-friendly, man-centered, lifestyle-oriented gospel 
when they are not echoing the divisive and hate-filled political rhetoric that runs counter to the true message of the gospel, while its celebrity pastors live luxurious lifestyles, exemplifying the winner-take-all ethos that is ruining our society. Thus, turning their backs on Jesus' true message and on the sacrifice that he made on the cross. But the question is, how did we get here? We previously discussed the philosophical road to ruin that led up to Ayn Rand's poisonous objectivist philosophy. But now, we must go beyond and discuss former GE CEO Jack Welch, who played a large role in establishing our current societal challenges. In this segment, we will be covering Jack Welch, using an excerpt from our Poverty Trap video. For it was Jack who put the essence of objectivistic philosophy into action during his time as CEO of General Electric, and helped to initiate the collapse of the working class into spiraling poverty that we see today. It's true that in previous generations, millions moved up in class in America through hard work and diligence. Almost anyone with initiative could go back to college, get a good paying job and move up in class and live the American middle class dream. But today, the American middle class is disappearing and America ranks near the bottom of industrialized nations in upward mobility, trapping millions of Americans in permanent cycles of poverty where they sit, waiting for some lucky break or a lottery ticket to free them. As Bernie Sanders said, for many, the American dream has become a nightmare. Millions of other highly skilled Americans are underappreciated and stuck in low-paying dead-end jobs. Others are living from paycheck to paycheck in their efforts to maintain a middle-class lifestyle. Occupations that used to pay a living wage now pay of pittance of what they used to pay. And none of this happened by accident. It was all by design. As Elizabeth Warren said, people feel like the system is rigged against them. And here is the painful part, they're right. The system is rigged. And indeed, the system is rigged, and that rigging was architected by one man. Neutron, Jack Welch, former CEO of General Electric. As Welch would say, public hangings are teaching moments. Every company has to do it. In 1981, GE was a world-class corporation with a formidable engineering legacy. It was the home of a diverse set of class-leading labs in the areas of aerospace, medical imaging, consumer appliances, communications. Developed over a century of dedicated stewardship, these labs were a national engineering asset. And whereas GE's co-founder Thomas Edison's vision was to light American cities and democratize electricity, Welch's vision for his world-class engineering labs and their staffs when he took them over in 1981 was to gut them in an effort to reduce costs and boost GE's short-term stock price. Thousands of talented engineers and scientists were thrown on the street as Welch's rank and yank philosophy took hold at GE. Even profitable divisions were cut if their short-term return potential didn't meet Welch's standards for quick returns. Factories that had been national assets were closed, even if they were doing profitable work. World-class research and development efforts were mothballed, providing openings for foreign competitors to step in. Company CPAs were given the job of making it all look legitimate, boosting the stock price, even as GE's future potential was being hollowed out. But this short-sighted thinking showed enormous short-term benefits as GE stock prices began to soar. Jack went on to spread the gospel of short-term profits by promoting his books and working the lecture circuits. He established training academies to spread his destructive ideas throughout the American business culture. And as Jack's ideas took hold, the dominoes began to fall. Massive layoffs became normalized. Pension plans disappeared. Factory jobs moved overseas. Factory towns became ghost towns and homelessness exploded in our major cities. As the American dream of affordable home ownership began to slip from our grasp. As did America's world-class lead in research and development. And, if you want to know why we didn't get to Mars by the year 2000, ask Jack. 
He's the one who dismantled the labs that could have taken us there. As this graphic from the Economic Policy Institute shows, salaries began flatlining in the early 80s. Before Jack, a single high school graduate could support a family of four. After Jack, many two-income families with some college typically live paycheck to paycheck. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Welch's philosophy of treating workers and factories as disposable commodities poisoned the American corporate culture. It became a staple of future planning in most companies and laid the groundwork for the North American Free Trade Agreement. The book, The Man Who Broke Capitalism, is one of many books lamenting the tragic legacy of Jack Welch and Welchism. 